King, Senator Rounds, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, let me begin by just thanking you and your teams for standing on the front line and in some cases having to make some very difficult decisions. Um, I appreciate the work that both of you do. As you know, there is an effort and a significant discussion going on with regard to spectrum and spectrum sharing. It's important as a country because there's lots of people that want uh, 5G. It's critical to our country and to expansion. But at the same time, 5G means that there is parts of the electromagnetic spectrum which have to be dedicated towards that. At the same time, spectrum is limited. And part of what that limited spectrum is is being used by the Department of Defense. Over the years, there has been more and more of a move uh, by folks who want to be able to provide more services to the general public uh, to take parts of the spectrum and that which is used by the Department of Defense. I'm concerned about this, and as you know, right now there is a discussion about that part of the spectrum that is between 3.1 and 3.45 gigahertz. There is a desire because this is a very desirable part of the spectrum. Now, on the political side of things, and we don't expect you to get into the politics of it, there is a real push to try to move some of that away from the Department of Defense on a shared basis. At the same time, there is a reason why the Department of Defense uses this part of the spectrum in that it has some very, very special qualities. I'm going to get into the part of this in which we need your professional military advice. And I'm making it that way because there are folks that clearly understand the value of 5G who would prefer to have this moved in an expeditious fashion out and away from DOD uses or shared uses and into the private sector, and I understand their desire to do so. But I believe that the national defense of this country is critical and must be maintained. So what I'm going to ask in terms of your professional military opinion is to work our way through this in a discussion with me about the critical needs of this country for parts of the spectrum that could be at risk if we make the wrong political decision. I'm going to begin. General Cotton, within 3.1 to 3.45 and in very close proximity to that, is it true that we have significant radars that we have to maintain? That is a correct statement. Is it true that those radars that we are dependent on protect our country, Alaska, Hawaii, and the mainland from the possibility of attack by aggressors uh, with regard to uh, continental, intercontinental ballistic missiles, um, uh, short-range missiles, um, drones, um, all sorts, or I would say almost the vast majority of those types of, of weapon systems, including aircraft, that may very well be coming at us or directed at our shores. Senator, that's a true statement. If you were to lose part of this spectrum, would it be true, or if they were to look at using part of this spectrum, would it be true that some of those radars that we rely on could be at risk? They could be at risk, sir. Uh, thank you. General Dickinson, Space is the name of the game for you, and you not only have, have satellites and so forth, you're responsible also for early warning in some cases as well. Is that not true? That is true. I have a UCP responsibility as the global sensor manager. In those sensors, are there critical aspects that include very sensitive parts of the spectrum that are in or near this particular part of the spectrum? Yes. What would happen if you were to lose access to those or to be limited to those in, in, in terms of your ability to provide adequate warning should an attack occur? It would be impacted, possibly degraded. If you were required to move away from the assets that you currently have in that part of the spectrum, can you give us any kind of an estimate as to the costs involved? Uh, Senator, I can't give you an accurate cost estimate. I would say it would be very expensive. Thank you. Uh, General Cotton, are you familiar with the Aegis? I am, sir. Is it clear that the Aegis system has significant parts of its radar systems within this very sensitive part of the, uh, the spectrum? It does, sir. Do you have any idea as to what the cost would be to try to move or to try to, uh, 
to uh, allocate spectrum away or areas other than this if it's even available for the Aegis system that protects our coasts? I don't have a cost, but I know it's extremely expensive. Thank you. Do you believe that it is very important, and I'm going to ask this to both of you, and then, Mr. Chairman, my time, I realize, is up, but I'd like to have this question. Do you believe it is important that uniformed officers of the Department of Defense have a say and are at least have an opportunity to express to those who make these decisions if your professional military opinion about how serious the loss of these particular parts of the spectrum could be if the decision is being made uh, to share or to release uh, that part of the spectrum? I would at least like to have my best military uh, advice uh, heard. Thank you. General Dickinson? As a uh, combatant commander, I would ask, I would say the same thing. I would ask that my best military advice would be considered. Thank you. General Cotton, I'm just going to finish with this. Have you been able to offer your best professional military advice to anyone uh, uh, on the release of this spectrum to date? Sir, most of those discussions happened prior to, to December, so I don't know what the, this position was done, but I haven't had that discussion since the command. Thank you very much. I, look, I really appreciate this. This is a difficult situation because there really is going to come a point at which your professional military advice has got to be shared with those individuals that are looking at making this decision and it should not be made. And I'm just going to finish with this. I believe that it should not be made until after the study, which is being completed by the Department of Defense and the NTIA, is completed. Would you agree with me that nothing should be done with this until after that study is completed? I agree, and we are part of that study. Thank you. General, would you agree with that? I would agree, and we are part of that study. And do you believe that there should absolutely be an appeals process that we have currently got in law? Should that be continued on in its current form? General Cotton? Yes. General Dickinson? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your patience. Thank you, Senator Rounds. And just to make sure we are uh, clear, the S band is the band that Senator Rounds and I were both talking about. Thank you. Senator Gillibrand, please. 